Hey there, Nikki does here. Welcome back. Once again, it's a Panda Placer video, this time focusing on the bamboo auto feeders, which are brand new. These are the AS2, the version two of these feeders. Version one was substantially different and they were really, they were quite good for uh, 0603 parts at best. They didn't really work for 0402s. I am using these for 0402s regularly and they are working great so far. So the uh, AS1 came out and um, this is the AS2. It is uh, the bamboo feeder and it's available in many widths. It's uh, open source. You buy the hobby servo and some springs from Panda Placer. That makes sense because they're cheap. And then you uh, 3D print the rest. And I choose to 3D print um, white PLA here, or PLA plus, I suppose. Uh, and I have quite a five kilo rolls of each sitting up there. So I do white for the overall housing. I do black for the internal parts and the spool. And then I do the um, top spring here out of PETG or PETG. And I also do this front clip out of PETG, which I haven't printed for this one yet. You'll see them up here. It's available in eight, 12, 16, and 24 uh, widths. I think this here is a 16 and I've, did I just have a 24? I've got a 24 around here somewhere. Here it is. It's kind of a monster fella. Obviously the more 24s you put on your Panda Placer, the less room you're going to have for other feeders. So I've got the left side set up with the older AS2, kind of an interim version that uh, I don't think was widely released. Uh, and it isn't compatible with the mount system for the AS2 that is released. So these are going to stay up here for a while. I am currently switching these over from the this older style to the new style on the right side of the machine. So this is the older style feeder up here. And I may leave those and I'll probably just put these uh, 13 positions over here just because there's no real sense in reprinting all these parts that the this version worked quite well. They aren't available though in the wider uh, sizes. So really I'm, I'm quite happy to move into these. This is supposed to be about mounting these things and it is getting this set up initially is quite a trick and it's gonna take me even more effort to get the camera in there, frankly. But um, it's kind of a multi-step process and I did print a jig that made a huge difference. I printed this feeder alignment jig that made a difference and you can get this, I'll link it in the video. You can print your own. Um, <clears throat> the process is pretty tricky, I guess. Uh, it takes some thought at least because to do a good job means um, you're going to have to be careful where you put these feeders from front to back on the machine. And once you establish your first feeder, you're forced to follow that same pitch all the way through even though there's two feeder boards. This is a, a 0 through 12, so a 13 position board here, and this is 0 through 12. And the boards, you might ever so carefully be able to, well, I've got extras. <laughs> You'll be able to see that the boards plug together. So here are the feeder boards, and they uh, plug in kind of elephant trunk to tail style here. So you, you have a little bit of space. You could wiggle how far you push in these DuPont uh, 0 0.1 inch or 2.54 millimeters spacing pins. But um, once you put the, the front one in, you're pretty much establishing where you're going to be front to back. And to get 26 feeders down the side here, and you can see the label here is 0 through 12 and 0 through 12, to get 26 feeders down the side, um, you really don't have any extra room in the travel of the system. So uh, you're really not going to want to mess around with that. In fact, you won't get the camera up to the front and these new feeders use the ban the open PNP uh, modification on the latest test builds like the nightly builds that go through and look for the sprocket holes to find the 0402 part pockets to find small part pockets so you do have to get the camera over there if you're going to feed small parts so if you're going to be running the big feeders like uh, I've got to do a couple of big feeders you'll want to put parts up here that don't need vision because your camera is not going to get up this far. So anyway, once you center for travel from left to right, and, and it might take a little bit of trial and error, so um, just be ready for that and have some patience with it. 
I'm going to just go through the actual steps that I find work the best for setting these up. And I've set up, I don't know, probably three or four times I've done this uh, learning each time. So I'm sharing with you the stuff I learned by making mistakes. Let's get the camera twisted a little more level. All right. And I'm not going to take it apart wholly because I just don't want to. Um, you don't start with the boards down here. Let's power this thing off. You don't start with the boards down here. You start with this shoe foot thing, which looks like this. And this, normally they have a clip on the bottom, but I don't have a clip on this one. I don't know if I have one. There's a wider one with a clip. So this is the, uh, like the tightening thing. When you put this in a feeder, uh, like this, that's a too wide. Here we go. So this is how the feeder mounts in. The feeder drops in here, uh, drops over that, and then slides forward. And here's your release, and you can lift it off, and this is forward and locked. Uh, well, it's not really locked. So locked is then you can slide this thing up, and that'll, has an eccentric on it that'll pinch this clamp, and the clamp locks the feeder in place. So, once this feeder is locked in here, now it won't come out anymore. Now, I'm not using these lock parts too much on the other side, but I think I, I've got them all installed in here, and I'll have to tune them all up, tighten this screw so that they lock just the right amount. But this, <clears throat> this foot piece is really the... Pardon me. <clears throat> this foot piece is really the starting uh, step for the alignment. So what you want to do, this won't be up here. We can leave that out and this won't be in but you start by getting your foot where you want it <clears throat> and <clears throat> excuse me one <clears throat> I have a horse in my throat it's bigger than a frog for sure uh, once you've got that lined up <clears throat> then you're going to want to use this jig to get you started and this jig is really set up only for the uh, the um, eight millimeter pitch part so um, I'll have to rethink how that's going to work to put the bigger ones in but this is really going to end up getting this part set up and the feeder board set up so once you get your first uh, foot piece in there you want to set this jig in place get the rest of these feet in there loosely but the first one's tight and then you're going to want to set this jig on top of here and it's going to push forward and drop into the slots of the plate back here this thing this receiver that goes forward in the machine and that's going to make sure that all of the slots in the receiver back here are very closely aligned with all the slots up here so once you have that pushed in nicely now all these can be loose all the rest of these feet can be loose and this thing can be loose and now you really just have to go through and tighten up now you'll notice I do a screw on the first, I skip two holes, the third, skip two holes, the fifth, skip two holes, the eighth, skip two holes, and the tenth or whatever it is. I just probably misspoke that. First, fourth, seventh, tenth, twelfth. I'm not going to try to speak and think at the same time. That's a lot. So now you can come through and tighten these up. I don't think it matters to put one every single hole because really what these screws are doing is when you pull the feeder out, so, oh, and then, well, I'll just stop talking about that for a second. Then you also come through here and you tighten all these up. So each one of these uh, gets retightened, and now they will be spaced at the proper pitch for the feeder. Okay, so now once you've got those two steps done, you can take this out and that'll be all lined up. And now if we took a, a new feeder and we put it in there, let's find one of the new ones, uh, an eight though, because nothing else is going to fit. Here's an eight of the new one that's not, not fully assembled. So we'll just, we'll just put that together good enough to get the job done. Now you take those feeders and what you'll do is put this board down below 
and leave it loose. That's mounted in with two screws. Also a 2.5 millimeter, they're uh, M4s. So that's got this attachment screw here with a T-nut. There's a washer and a spacer, and a washer and a spacer and a T-nut. So you'll just get that in there, but you'll leave it loose with the power off. And then you'll take, now this is, imagine this is your first board, right? Because we're just, we actually have to butt up to the, to the prior board in this example, but you have to imagine this is your first board so it's not tied down at all. And then you'll put this in one of the positions and you'll be, you'll put your head underneath here and look back as you slide this in and make sure that the board goes right to the place it has to go. The pins are going to line up. And um, I'm doing this kind of cold on this one and it's not working out great yet. And I'm not exactly sure, oh, I think because my latchy bit here is uh, latched. I haven't gotten used to those yet. All right, so now that's in. And you would make sure that the pins down below here are exactly, and they're not on this one actually. There, now it's in and I can actually latch it. And now you'd make, oh, <laughs> didn't latch it tight enough. Now you'll make sure that those pins are lined up down at the bottom so you're not off by one, which I keep doing. I'm gonna try latching it again. There. So remember this one isn't screwed together. So you're going to want to make sure that the pins are properly sliding into the JST or whatever it is, that servo connector that's hanging down inside there. Each one of these has a, a servo connector inside here if that'll focus. There's a black, the black lead for the servo. Let's see, there's one over here, I think. Here's the hobby servo and it has that three pin lead in there. That's mounted inside the, the uh, housing of the feeder. So then once that's in place, now you can go through and tighten up the two screws that hold the board in place. And you'll have these, these three elements, the, the connection on the board, the shoe, and this front nose mounting piece. Those will all be lined up perfectly. Now again, the wider ones are fairly new and I haven't made myself a new jig for this, but I'll have to figure out, probably make something, make some smaller ones because my thought would be you'd set this all up with your 13 of these or so and then just take a couple out and replace them with the, the wider ones. So here's one of the wider ones and you would probably just do this manually because already this front piece is, is set and this feeder control board thing is all set. The only thing you really have to do is take these, what I call a shoe, take that out and put one of these other shoes in place for it. So uh, yeah, I don't think that'll be too tricky, but um, it'd be kind of fun. So uh, yeah, the Panda Placer is uh, fairly inexpensive. My view on it for the cost is that if you're doing a lot of boards of a certain kind, it's probably worth it just to buy one machine and dedicate that machine for that board because Switching all these things around to me isn't very exciting for, I think this is still about $800, $850. So that's not too exciting. Um, it's kind of like the price of these, and I certainly have a few of these. So if you're building boards, you probably want to uh, have a couple extra panda placers too. So my intention is to build a multi-level rack here so I can have a couple of them similar thought as to this. So I'm space efficient here in the workshop. Well, in any case, um, I look forward to your questions and uh, comments. If you have a better idea, if you make yourself a new alignment jig, please do share it on Thangs or Printables or Yegi. Get Make sure it's up on Yegi or something like that so people can find it. Um, yeah, you can find all the, the files for this on docs.pandaplacer.com. And... Um, yeah, if you got any questions, please do shoot them over. Thanks for watching.